Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Re-Engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look at um, a pretty interesting game. It was played between Georg Rotlevi and Richard Teichmann uh, in round 23 of the Karlsbad International in 1911. And um, well, it basically kind of sealed Richard Teichmann's uh, victory in that tournament. And um, yeah, the opponent is quite interesting. Uh, Georg Rotlevi, best known, of course, for losing a fabulous game um, against uh, Akiba Rubinstein. But it was a really, really strong player. Uh, seemed to be getting really, really strong. But had a very short career, apparently became uh, quite ill and, um, and died very young. Um, but um, yeah, could have been a real star in, uh, in Polish chess, but uh, it wasn't to be. Um, this game was uh, mentioned by Milan Widmar um, as uh, one of the Teichmann's great games of uh, Karlsbad 1911, along with the games, the wins against Karl Schlechter and Akiba Rubinstein that we've already seen. So it seemed worth uh, sort of uh, looking at this triumvirate, the last uh, member, just to see how good it was. How did the game go? Well, it was a Queen's Gambit declined. D4, D5, Knight F3, Knight F6, C4, E6. Uh, Teichmann, uh, quite a big aficionado of the Queen's Gambit declined, uh, lost um, uh, a couple of famous games against uh, Akiba Rubinstein, but um, yeah, also got some very good results. And uh, well, it suited his, uh, his very patient style. Played it in the good old fashioned way, the classical, E3, castles, Queen C2. But uh, in quite modern fashion, he wasn't uh, afraid of playing uh, c5 quickly when the uh, occasion presented itself and uh, accepting um, an isolated queen's pawn on d5. So he played it uh, pretty aggressively, and that's, uh, that's not bad at all. So after castles, um, a number of moves here, um, c takes d4, um, and after knight takes d4, the knight b6 is uh, quite well known. And um, also b6 is possible, but queen a5 is a, a very reasonable move here. Obviously, white's playing, you know, very aggressively by uh, castling queenside here. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've had um, uh, mixed results castling queenside in the queen's gambit declined. Always feels nice and aggressive, but uh, somehow that black king side is pretty solid. So c takes d5, e takes d5, d takes c5, knight takes c5. And uh, well, you know, black does indeed have a, um, um, an isolated pawn on d5. But well, yeah, you know, with the king um, um, on the open c file, and even on the, you know, the b file, well, there's maybe some pressure along the h7, b1 diagonal. Not always clear that, it's, um, that that's much of a weakness for black. You, you feel rather happier about, uh, you know, the prospects along the c-file, also the prospects of maybe, uh, you know, advancing the b-pawn even as a pawn sacrifice. Um, yeah, I mean, the d5-pawn is actually hanging, so white could grab it, but it's not really that amazing. Uh, if you take off takes, the engine's just like bishop e6. And, uh, well, if you take, I just take back. No particular danger. And uh, if king b1, rook fc8, uh, quite dangerous for, um, for, uh, um, for, for white, this. Actually, the engines are looking at the forcing line takes. And then b takes a5, bishop e4. Um, bishop d3, knight takes d3. And then the engines see nothing better than taking on here. Um, but yeah, rook c5, and uh, you know you're doing um, you're doing pretty well here with black. This uh, extra pawn is not great, and the white king's a little bit weak as well. Um, you could take with a knight on d5 straight away, but it's quite similar. Bishop b6 takes, bishop takes d5, and now um, things get interesting. Bishop takes c5, bishop f3, gf3, and b6. Just. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you go uh, something like bishop f8, I'll have queen e1 check, for example. Queen d1, rook c8 check. Bishop c4, rook c4 check. King b1 takes, takes, and king f8. And uh, pawn down, but the engines don't see any particular problem with this uh, rook ending. The point is, the rook's, you know, going to come around to, um, to h4. And if you go f4, the engines want rook to c5, amazingly enough, just going round to h5. So, um... Yeah, pretty sharp. Um, yeah, rook d8, king e7, rook a8, rook c7. That's what the uh, the engines want. And, uh, well, you know, the black king uh, can even start thinking about coming in here into uh, against the white pawns. It's uh, 
uh, probably you know just around balanced really so yeah what Teichmann did is is pretty good um, the engines were also looking at just throwing in h6 maybe which might be uh, you know even more useful there and after bishop h4 playing knight takes c5 just uh, gives you a little bit more um, well that extra space on the king's side so uh, you never have to fear back rank uh, checks or anything but um, yeah knight takes c5 from Teichmann is pretty decent but uh, I mean, Rod Levy wasn't really looking for um, for exchanges. He was looking for some sort of attack later. But it's hard to organise. It really is. I mean, there's no weaknesses on the black uh, king side. Actually, you know, the the most vulnerable king is actually on c1. And uh, well, Rod Levy's soon on the defensive. Bishop e6, king b1, and rook a c8. So um, all pretty normal stuff from black. And now we've got a definite threat of uh, knight e4 here. Now f3 was the uh, the most natural, just to cover e4 in that way. And um, Rotlevi played bishop d3. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, knight takes e4 is quite interesting in this position. The, the point is that um, um, after you take, I take on here. And I'm opening up two things. Bishop takes a2 check because this knight is pinned to the queen. And also queen takes g5. So you go knight e6, I go fe. I'm still threatening uh, here. And of course, if you went bishop f6, then uh, bishop f6 would be you know, rather unpleasant, attacking the knight on c3. So, um, well, there's some tactics here. Queen b3, rook takes c3. Um, and then uh, because uh, if you go uh, queen takes g5, I've got queen e6 check. And if rook f7, then queen takes c8. So you go rook takes c3 to get out of that. Queen e6, rook, eight, rook f7, bishop f6, rook c6, bishop c3, strike and counter strike, rook e6, bishop a5, rook f2. And um, well, after rook d2, rook e f6, rook hd1, I think we can say that finally we've got something, something vaguely approaching uh, equality. Although bishop c5 attacking the pawn e3 just means that, um, uh, uh, that uh, the black's got a, a somewhat of an initiative. But uh, knight c4 was uh, was interesting, but uh, Teichmann played very simply, just played the move h6. And um, um, probably um, Rotlevy was a little bit worried that if he played bishop h4, we'd do something like g5 and then knight e4 like this. And that indeed does look rather worrying. Um, the engines think you can get away with it by just by taking and going f3. Because after takes takes, you can't take on here because of queen g6 and bishop e5 check. So you have to spend a move playing king g7 and then we, we check and defend here. But, you know, this does feel quite nice for black, I have to say. You know, I'd, I'd much rather be black than, uh, than white here, even if the engines think uh, that white can hold this OK. So I think already you can see that, you know, white's in a little bit of difficulty here. But bishop f6 played, uh, bishop f6, and now black's got the two bishops and, uh, well, some nice stuff pointing towards that queen side. So, yeah, what are we going to do? I mean, Rot Levy played the move bishop f5 just to try and uh, exchange off some uh, some pieces, also to uh, protect the knight on d4 with the rook, but uh, it just it does not go well in actual fact. Um, rook fd8 was, uh, was played. Again, this move knight e4 is quite interesting. Um, bishop e4, I mean, we're threatening knight takes c3. You can't take with the knight on e4. So bishop e4, d takes e4, knight e6... And then f takes e6. And if rook c1, we just take and go rook d8 here. And we're looking for uh, rook d3. He played this rook to d8 to keep uh, attacking the pawn f2. And again, very unpleasant. Stockfish lost the game against Dragon with this. So, yeah. If that's happening, probably pretty serious. Um, Teichmann again played very sensibly rook fd8. And um, what's the point of this move? Well, it, in a way, it's just defending the, the pawn on d5, of course. But it's also looking at playing rook d6 to b6 or a6. So, yeah, it's just a good developing move. I mean, you know, you, as always with these moves, I try to avoid, you know, really criticising them. Um, these are good moves, rook fd8. You should never be criticised for playing them. You, can, you know, maybe the engines can find something just a little bit more concrete, a little bit more tactical. But, yeah, it doesn't mean that a move like rook fd8 is wrong. Should be, uh, um, you know, should be a, just a good human move there. So bishop takes e6 was played, and now f takes e6. Actually, the engines um, wanted to play knight takes e6, 
Um, and after queen d3 to takes, takes, and go rook c4. And uh, it just turns out to be a little bit tricky to defend this um, um, this pawn on d4. I mean, you know, we've got b5 to b4 coming in, queen b6. If this knight moves away, we can come around to a4. Yeah, this is quite nasty, yeah? We've also got rook d6 to b6 or to a6 coming in. It, uh, knight e6 is surprisingly uh, dangerous. I'm not sure I would have noticed that myself, to be honest. Uh, it, um, I was a bit surprised when I saw the engine recommending this. What Teichmann did, f takes e6, looks very natural because, well, you're defending the pawn on d5, but actually just dynamically, e5 and d4 coming in. I mean, what can be wrong with that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's getting tricky for um, for White already. Rod Levy played queen g6, hoping to get some counterplay, I think. If e5, he's hoping for something like knight f5. But uh, Teichmann played a really good move, and it you know, really shows that he'd... Uh, when he played rook fd8, he had a concrete idea in mind, and that's to go rook d6. And, um, well, this rook's coming over here, and there's also some sort of extra attack against the queen, and we're going to see how that works out. So rook c1. Um, now actually a move that, um, that I thought was strong, and uh, the engines like it too. Um, b5. Just sacrifice that, that b pawn, and, uh, well, if the... Uh, if if the um, uh, if, if you don't take it, I'm just going to go b4 and then rook a6. It's a really strong move. But um, rook a6, Teichmann's move, very controlled. Um, just uh, lining up here and, uh, well, b5 is going to be dangerous. Knight e4 is going to be dangerous. Really unpleasant, this. So um, f3 was played by uh, Rot Levy, just trying to, uh, to keep um, a, a knight out of e4 here. Um, yeah, the engines thought that a3 was maybe better just to stop the pressure against a2. But then we go rook b6, you know, and uh, well, we're threatening queen a3. We've got stuff coming in. You know, I mean, it's 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 really unpleasant. So after f3, um, yeah, um, my move again here, b5. That would have been really, really strong for uh, for black. I'm a bit surprised that uh, Teichmann didn't do it, to be honest, because, uh, you know, he's played so excellently. Uh, it's just sort of... Uh, just exactly what you think, really. I mean, just b4 is coming in. It's just huge. But um, rook d8 was played. I don't know whether Teichmann got a bit worried about maybe some tactics, some, some tricks or some pins on the rook. But he just went rook d8. Maybe he was even thinking about playing rook d6 over to b6. That's not completely impossible either. But um, rook c2 was played by uh, Rot Levy. Um, sensible in principle, just uh, looking maybe at some stage to play b3 and cover the pawn a2 if necessary. And now Teichmann played a very nice idea here. He played bishop takes d4, e takes d4, and then this move e5. And uh, opening up the line of attack on the queen, removing that knight that might have jumped to f5 if he just played e5 immediately. Um, and you're just looking to play e takes d4 and then chase the knight away from c3. So queen g4 was played. And here Teichmann missed a little bit of a trick, really, because uh, there's a really strong move here. Maybe you want to have a, you know, pause the video, have a little look, because uh, it's quite a nice idea. The idea is to just play knight e6 here. And um, if d takes e5, we play d4 and the knight has to move away and then we take on a2. And, well, there's nothing you can do about it. Um... I think the, the best the engine was finding was a3, and then knight takes d4, just wins a clear pawn. Rook d2, rook b6, we're threatening queen a3, queen c3. Total carnage, total carnage. So that was a really big chance, knight e6. Teichmann took on d4 and played knight e6, which is okay. But now black gets the possibility of queen e5. And of course, after d4, we swap off the queens. So Black's got some uh, some more work to do here. And, uh, well, you know, the engines were, were drawing games again from now on. So, uh, yeah, you know, obviously uh, hasn't quite gone 100% uh, according to plan. So B5 played. Um, that threatens B4. It also threatens D4 because the uh, exchange of queens is blocked off. B3, making use of that rook on C2 to defend the pawn on A2. And now d4. And uh, and here, um, yeah, um, uh, Rot Levy had to be just a little bit brave and play this move knight d5. Um, yeah, if you go b4, then we've got knight e7 check. That's the key idea, actually. It's not even just uh, holding the knight. It's causing uh, a rather huge accident there. So knight d5 would have been um, just a little bit better. And uh, yeah, it's, it's also creating some threats here. Um, knight e4, the knight's just a little bit less punchy it's not really threatening anything and uh well Rot Levy played d3 and the engines are back at minus 1.86 here 
So um, rook d2 and then this move knight d4. And this is really nice because uh, white's just threatening, uh, black's rather is threatening knight c2, cutting off the defense of the rook on the a2 pawn. We're also threatening knight takes b3 here in some, uh, in some uh, uh, variations, although not at the moment because the, uh, the queen's covering a1, the rook's covering a2, so uh, no checks at the moment. The rook c1 was played, knight c2, and now queen b2 from Rot Levy. So it's all hands on deck, really. Uh, um, you know, the queen just uh, defending the pawn on a2 here. And uh, check, knight c2, just um, uh, getting a, gaining a little bit of time. And then rook c6 was played by um, uh, Teichmann. This is a very nice move. Uh, actually, we're just looking to play something like rook c6 and then knight a3 discovered check. Um, you know, that's a, <laughs> that's a really big threat here. Um, yeah, I mean, the engine's already looking to play b4, trying to uh, give up a pawn just to get a little bit of air. I mean, if you go b4, you've got queen b3 checks as well. That would have been a good, confusing little move there. But um, Rod Levy played rook cd1, um, and now rook dc8. Pretty strong move. Um, knight a3 check, king there, and then b4 was... Um, um, was the engine uh, idea because simply if you take on d3 I take take and go rook c2 and you're completely lost queen d4 I just have check and um, a rook b1 checkmate there so um, uh, yeah I mean actually you, you're completely paralyzed after b4 and uh, well I might go queen c7 and rook c2 or I might go rook c8 and rook c2 it's 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 over completely over rook dc8 very very strong still um, rook d3 was played by um, uh, Teichmann. Knight a3 check and then b4. Uh, it's pretty similar, but you're just um, you're just um, one move slower, and that gave uh, Teichmann, uh, or rather Rotlevi, the possibility of playing rook d7, threatening queen g7 uh, checkmate there, and that was met by this glorious move queen e5, which I think Teichmann had uh, definitely seen in advance here. Um, and I think this is probably why the uh, the old masters liked it so much. So queen e5 is just rook c1 check. King b2 is rook c2 uh, checkmate. Um, rook c1, rook c1, king b2, rook b1 checkmate again there. So yeah, very, very nice indeed. So rook d8 check was played. Takes, takes. King h7. And uh, once again, queen takes c5 allows this mate on b1. Very important mate. So Rolevi played rook d1, and now, yeah, I mean, you know, Teichmann, Teichmann did absolutely fine, but knight c2 check was the, the strongest line, followed by queen c7. And then we're just going to go knight a3 and then rook c2, and uh, it's just totally end of story. Nothing to be done uh, there. It's just totally lost. But um, Teichmann played the good old sensible human move. He took and played rook takes g2. And, uh, well, I mean, it's, um, you know, requires a little bit of care. But the big problem is that, you know, well, we've seen these mates that was made with a rook on b1. It just means that the rook on d1 can't move. So all white can really do is use the knight to try and cause some disruption. But it's not really going to be enough at all. So uh, rook h1 was played by Rot Levy, g5. Knight f6 check, king g7, knight e4. King g6, knight d6, a5 from um, uh, from um, uh, Teichmann. And, uh, you know, the big idea really is that um, black's got to, white's got to be careful because if, you, if you're not careful, if you move the knight away to here, for example, I'm going to go knight b5 to c3 and then deliver mate on a2. So you've got to keep control of this knight still. And this is a big problem for, uh, for white. So rook c1, rook takes h2, knight c4, looking for the exchange of knights. Um, well, wouldn't be bad. You could just go h5 here. Um, the engines are, su are suggesting um, 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 rook c2, simply to exchange off rooks and then run with the h-pawn. Teichmann, um, well, he took it a little bit more slowly. He played knight b5, looking for, uh, for knight c3. Knight e5 check, king g7, knight g4. I think probably he missed, um, you know, Rot Levy's, uh, the way Rot Levy played, which was, you know, kind of... Um, uh, Kind of interesting. The, the point is that if you go knight c3, I take on a5, stopping mate. And of course, with a knight on c3, rook e1 to b1 isn't mate because you can escape to c2. So, well, rook e1 was played, knight a3, threatening mate. Rook c7, check king f8, and rook c1. And we're back to where we were before. So, Teichmann again, uh, sort of uh, 
played here. We got the same little sequence again. Wee! And now it was uh, Teichmann's move. Again, h5 would be very, very strong here. Um, knight f6, h4. The engines don't bother at all about uh, losing that pawn. You, you're coming in with your king. You're, you're going to win this f pawn. And the h pawn is going to be a runner. Um, that would have been very clear as well. But it, there's nothing wrong with what Teichmann does. It's very calm, very cautious, but, um, but not bad at all. King g7. Um, rook c1, king g6. Easy does it. Rook c6, a little joke maybe from Rod Levy. We just take off and play h5. And, uh, well, that's it. You're not going to survive that, are you? H pawn is just going to run. So there we are. I liked that game very much. I mean, I always like these games um, where black, uh, for the classical players, just, um, you know, plays a queen's gambit declined and then just outplays his opponent. I mean, I, I always like that uh, very, very much. And, uh, well, I think you saw that casting queenside against the queen's gambit declined, not always the... Uh, the silver bullet really um, um, you know essentially you know Rot Levy didn't really manage to find a good plan and um, um, all of Teichmann's move were, were just very very smooth really you know Rook came to d8 lovely idea to bring the Rook along the third rank uh, you know against the King and then some lovely uh, some lovely tactics you know I mean I thought this um, move of um uh with bishop takes d4 here and e5 was uh, was absolutely lovely shame uh, teichman didn't find knight e6 but you know although teichman didn't find the uh, the quickest way to win it he was uh, you know always pretty much in control and uh, yeah you know i just thought it was a, a very nice controlled game and well when you consider this is played in the 23rd round teichman showing some stamina there to play such a a, a controlled game so there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you're uh, you're getting some uh, appreciation uh, as well for uh, Richard Teichmann's strength, because really, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, being pretty much unknown, he really is one of the strongest players. Uh, uh, you know, he's one of the strongest players of his generation and a really good player. You know, best games are really, really good. So, uh, well, hope you're enjoying that as well and uh, learning as much as I did. I knew a few of his games, but uh, yeah, this one I'd never seen before and I really do like it. So there we are. If you like the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my uh, new book, Reengineering the Chess Classics, full of stuff like this. Um, classic games, known, unknown, and uh, lots of great engine insights and human explanation. So, uh, but otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and keep your eyes peeled for uh, more TCC videos. Probably some CCCC videos quite soon because, um, well, Clover and uh, Viridithas are playing a huge uh, uh, playoff for the final qualifying place. But um, we should hopefully be seeing uh, Leela and Torch quite soon. And, um, yeah, and obviously, uh, yeah, some more games like this as well. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.